The sun may be spotless, but we have two coronal holes that are rotating into the Earth's strike zone and can bring us some solar storming. And the first is a warm-up to the main event. What does this mean for you? Those stories and more in the news this week. This forecast, sponsored in part by Eric Johansson. Check him out at Instagram.com slash Scoobist. We are definitely in suspense mode this week as we wait through some quiet space weather on the way to getting a couple chances from some decent solar storms. As you can see, the sun continues to be very spotless this week. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, I'm sorry, but you're still dealing with poor radio propagation on Earth's day side and these conditions will easily continue. But we do have a, a finger-like coronal hole that is gonna be rotating in through the Earth strike zone here probably around the week and as it does, it should be sending us some fast solar wind and it could give us aurora even down to mid latitudes for just a short while. But we got to look at that as kind of the warm up to the main event because as I'll show you in stereo's view, there is a big coronal hole that we've seen before and this one got us to a G2 level storm and you can just begin to see it rotating into Earth view on the sun's east limb and this region will be rotating in through the Earth strike zone in about two weeks and it could easily give us some solar storm storm conditions that will bring aurora deep into mid-latitudes and possibly give us some decent aurora show over many parts of the world. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, as you can see, the X-ray flux continues to be extremely low. We're basically flatlined, and therefore, by proxy, the solar flux continues to be low. We have a spotless sun, folks, and at solar minimum, this is pretty much the story. You can also see we do still get the data dropouts because we are still in eclipse season. So for those of you who look at data from the GOES spacecraft, if you see the data dropout or if you see a big object move across the, the images, don't worry, it's not Nibiru, it's just the moon. We will be moving out of eclipse season soon. Meanwhile, don't expect to see any solar flares on the horizon until we get out of the solar minimum. I doubt we're going to see much more than this. So continue to expect the radio propagation on Earth's day side to be... Switching to your solar storm conditions, you can see the last time we actually reached storm levels was clear back at the end of September. This was due to that big coronal hole that's just beginning to rotate into Earth view and could give us a decent solar storm here in about two weeks. And you can see the conditions actually lasted over a couple days. So that's always great news because it brings aurora to many parts of the world. But since then, things definitely quieted down. We've been hovering between unsettled conditions and active conditions. In fact, right around the 9th and the 10th, we got bumped back up to, un or to active conditions due to uh, some fast wind from a small coronal hole, but these storms are pretty weak considering we're at solar minimum. Since then, we've kind of been hovering around unsettled conditions, which has given us some decent aurora at high latitudes, but not anything really to talk about at mid latitudes. Luckily, all this is going to change here right about the weekend because we could bump back up to active conditions and possibly see some decent aurora down to mid latitudes. And although solar storms have been becoming more rare with this solar minimum sun, we still are getting enough shows to bring us some gorgeous aurora over many parts of the world recently, like these beautiful aurora shots from Norway. And it was seen in Sweden. We saw it in multiple places in Scotland. And it made it down to the UK. And it was seen in multiple places in Iceland. And as we flip over the pond, it was seen in the Western Hemisphere. It was in many places in Canada, like this in New Brunswick. And it was seen in British Columbia. It was seen in multiple places in Manitoba. And also in Alberta. And Saskatchewan and it even dipped down into the United States. We saw it in Maine and in Vermont and Michigan and in several places in Minnesota, especially at the Canadian border. And it even dipped down south. We saw the Aurora Australis in Tasmania. 
So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun pretty much from the side. And when you look at the sun from Stereo's view, you can actually see both of the coronal holes that we've been talking about. The first one has a finger-like extension that comes up from the south. This is the coronal hole that's going to be rotating in through the Earth's strike zone here right around the weekend. And it's going to be sending us some fast solar wind that could give us a decent, well, probably active, to maybe storm conditions for a short while and give us some decent aurora. But we're going to look at this one as kind of a warm-up to the main event. The main event is that bigger coronal hole that's kind of in the center of the disk, and it's much more extended kind of left to right. So that means it's going to give us even more fast solar wind that will last a longer period of time. This is the coronal hole that gave us a G2 level storm just a couple months ago and gave us a decent solar storm just at the end of September. So when this thing rotates in through the Earth strike zone, it's going to be sending us some decent fast solar wind and could easily give us some uh, really good aurora show down to mid-latitudes over the span of a couple days. So keep your fingers crossed, aurora photographers, because it's coming. Now also, if you look at the disk, it is spotless. So it does look like we're going to continue to have poor radio propagation on Earth's day side easily over the next maybe two weeks before we get a chance for a reprieve. Switching to our moon, we are now coming out of a full moon on our way to the third quarter, and by the 19th, the moon will still be about 75% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you're looking for those dim objects in the sky, you're going to have to compete with this bright companion, so be sure to check your local rise and set times. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week. As I mentioned before, this week is pretty quiet. We're only expecting some minor disturbances here and there. So at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled conditions with up to about a 20% chance of a minor storm early in the week. Now, as we get to the latter part of the week, those storm conditions possibilities will bump up a bit. And that's due to that coronal hole that could be sending us some fast solar wind. That's kind of a warm up to the main event. At mid latitudes, we're definitely expecting quiet conditions. But again, as we move to the end of the week and in through the weekend, we could start seeing those possibilities for aurora and actual storm conditions rise. So aurora photographers, definitely keep your batteries charged and get ready because it might get exciting soon. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything continues to be in the green when it comes to big solar flares. I know I sound like a broken record, but once again, we have a spotless sun. So solar flux is sitting in the high 60s, mid to high 60s, and there's no risk for radio blackouts. So this should make you GPS users on Earth's day side very happy. GPS reception should be pretty top notch. Now, of course, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, day side propagation once again is still struggling. And this is the way it's going to continue. Even as we look at stereo on the far side, we are still not seeing any bright regions. So the solar flux is going to continue to be in the 60s easily over the next two weeks. Now also because we are at solar minimum, we do have a higher cosmic ray impingement than we normally do have. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are in the marginal range for radiation dose. And this does include prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week definitely remains a bit on the quiet side, but there is a little suspense building. When we look at the disk, it may be spotless right now, and I know that's bad news for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. You guys are dealing with poor radio propagation on Earth's day side and very low solar flux, and it looks like these trends are going to continue easily over the next couple weeks. So you're just going to have to deal with that. Now, GPS users, you guys are in great shape. Not only are you getting great GPS reception on Earth's day side, but all these little minor disturbances are helping to stabilize that upper atmosphere for you. So your GPS reception, even at low latitude, should look pretty nice. So enjoy, because that's going to continue easily over the next week or so. Now the big story, of course, those are the coronal holes that are going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone here over the next, well, this weekend, and then of course the next week after that. And that could be bringing some aurora down to mid latitudes from the fast solar wind we're going to get. So your aurora photographer, Definitely keep yourself in suspense mode. Charge your batteries because we might get at some decent chancing for some solar storms. I'm Tam with the Scove. Thank you for watching.